Uh, moving on to discuss some uh, specific uh, devices uh, in our second part of ultrasonic energy systems, um, I'd like to introduce James Choi, who um, is our, is our, will be our next speaker. Good morning. Um, first, I would like to thank the committee members of the FUSE uh, for inviting me um, to participate in this exciting discussion, and especially Dr. Fuchsuber for the invitation. Um, this morning, I would like to talk about a very unique device uh, called CUSA, which uh, I'm a hepatobiliary surgeon, and I use this quite a lot uh, when I'm in the OR doing my liver operations, and I would just like to talk about that. And um, I have nothing to disclose. And uh, this is a picture of what the handpiece looks like uh, of the CUSA device. Um, as you can see here, uh, this is the part that you actually hold in your hand. And uh, this part is called the, the tip of the CUSA, which we'll uh, talk about. And then it's uh, connected to the irrigation and suction apparatus, as well as the, the tubing that connects to the main generator and the, the main console with the control unit that you can see here in this picture. And it comes with a wide, uh, different variety of tips depending on its application. So the, the main indication of the, uh, the CUSA is when you have a surgical procedure where fragmentation, emulsification, and aspiration of the soft tissue is desirable. And I'll get into uh, what I mean by that uh, in a minute. And its application is uh, quite varied. Uh, neurosurgery uses it quite a lot from, uh, from my understanding, and as well as uh, gastrointestinal and the solid organ injury, uh, solid organ surgery, as well as gynecology and urology. Um, this device is an ultrasonic aspirator where the fragmentation or it breaks up cells uh, and the suction and the irrigation of the, the fluid and the cellular debris occurred simultaneously and it allows the surgeon to remove the, sur uh, the tissue with very accurate control. The, the CUSA XL console, uh, the picture of, uh, that I showed you, uh, it provides an alternating current between either 23 or 36 kilohertz to the handpiece. And in the handpiece itself, the current passes through a coil which then induces a magnetic field. The magnetic field excites a transducer of nickel alloy laminations resulting in oscillating motion in the transducer laminated structure or, or vibration along its long axis. And here in the picture you see here in the bottom, the, the arrow shows you the direction of the vibration. The transducer then uh, transmits vibrations through a metal connecting body to an attached surgical tip. Remember in the, in the beginning I showed you the handpiece with the tip? So this black piece that's sticking out represents that tip. And when the vibrating tip contacts tissue, or in my case, uh, the liver tissue, it breaks the cells and, uh, or, or fragments them. And this is what the handpiece looks like when you're actually holding it in your hand. Um, so here is the, the, the handpiece, and this here, the metal part, is the, the tip. Now the tissue fragmentation or the breaking up of the, 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 the cellular structure depends on the amplitude setting in the console. And that in turn determines the tip stroke. And the higher the amplitude, the longer the tip stroke. And the lower the amplitude, the shorter the stroke and the less impact force that it has. And the, the fragmentation rate is also slower. So this diagram here shows you a picture of what I'm talking about. So the higher, going back. So when you have a high amplitude setting, this tip stroke becomes longer, okay? And when, when that uh, setting is reduced, then that tip stroke gets shorter and that, um, Makes a, makes a difference in terms of the rate at which it, it breaks up uh, tissue. And 
this afternoon, for those of you who are participating in the hands-on lab, I'll show you um, and how that affects your dissection of the liver. And uh, this is something that you really have to see and try it out to know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a little, I think it's a concept that may be a little difficult to understand just, uh, just verbally. And the tissue fragmentation also depends on the tissue strength. Now, the tissues with the weak intracellular bonds, such as some liver, such as liver parenchymal tissue, uh, solid organs, uh, fatty tissue, they're very easy to fragment. But tissues with a strong intracellular bond, such as vessel walls or the wall of the bile duct, nerves, tendons, ligaments, um, those structures contain less fluid and contain more collagen and or elastin, and therefore they are more resistant to fragmentation. And I'll discuss why that's important in a minute. Here in this diagram, you can see uh, the effect of the CUSA on the different types of tissue. On the, in the diagram in the left represents, let's say, a liver parenchyma, just parenchymal liver tissue, where when that tip, when this tip comes into contact, it breaks the tissue up very readily or very easily. But when it encounters a blood vessel, let's say it's an artery, then it is less likely to break up that tissue very easily. And because of the selective fragmentation rate, that allows you to dissect what you want and preserve the structures that you want. And in this case, when you're cutting through a liver, and let's say, you're, uh, let's say the tumor is sitting right next to uh, a bile duct that you want to preserve or the portal vein that you want to preserve, then as you're dissecting through the liver, then you will, when, you, when you encounter, let's say, the portal vein or the bile duct, then you'll actually be able to see that structure is coming up in your field very clearly. And then with the help of the CUSA, you can actually dissect around that, preserving those structures. And that's the true value of using the CUSA in liver surgery. Now, the CUSA device also has a built-in irrigation system, and the, the sterile irrigation fluid flows from an IV set, uh, either a bottle or a bag, that is hung on the console machine, and uh, you can also change the speed at which it irrigates. Uh, there's a pump uh, that is also in the console, and it pushes the fluid through an irrigation tubing to what's called a flu. Flu is a, uh, a silicone sleeve that uh, gets positioned around the tip. And I'll show you a picture of that also. And so the, the, the fluid flows through the, the, the flu, and as the irrigation fluid passes through the flu, it cools the tip. And as you can imagine, as the tip vibrates, it generates quite a lot of heat. So one of the functions, one of the major functions of the irrigation fluid is to make sure that the tip doesn't heat up. And as the flu fluid reaches the distal end of the tip, as much as 99% of the, uh, of the fluid that it passes, uh, it passes through what's called a two, the pre-aspiration holes in the tip, which I'll show you a diagram of, uh, and it eliminates the pulling of the sterile field uh, so that you can see what you're uh, dissecting through. And then it continually also clears the suction system so that it doesn't get clogged up. And the fluid that does not pass through the pre-aspiration holes irrigates the surgical site and suspends the fragmented tissue for, eerie, for, easily, uh, for easy aspiration. So here's a diagram of the, the distal, the tip of the handpiece. Here, this plastic sleeve is the flu that I was talking about, okay? And then this black dot represents the, what's called a pre-aspiration hole. So as the fluid comes, uh, to the distal part of your CUSA device, uh, the majority of that fluid that comes to the tip gets reabsorbed as it passes through the pre-aspiration hole. Okay? And then the 1% of the fluid uh, that is not aspirated is, ends up fragmenting, or, or not fragmenting, but suspending the fragmented tissue for easy aspiration. Now, the CUSA device comes with it a self-contained suction uh, capacity, and uh, the suction pump, which is also housed in the console, uh, produces an airstream moving toward the vacuum pump, pulls the irrigation fluid and the fragmented tissue, 
and other debris through the distal end of the surgical tip. From the surgical tip, the aspirated materials pass through the suction tubing into the suction canister. And it draws tissue toward the vibrating tip and creates a tip tissue coupling effect where it augments the fragmentation rate and the suction and the tip stroke work to optimize the fragmentation process itself. And then not to mention the fact that it keeps the surgical site clear of debris and the fluid and the blood so you can actually see what you're cutting through and what you're dissecting. Now, as I mentioned briefly uh, a minute ago, the vibrating tip generates a lot of heat. And to reduce the heat, the CUSA system includes a closed recirculating cooling water system. Uh, the pump in the console circulates water from a reservoir to and through the tube in the handpiece, and then return the fluid uh, via the, re uh, the return tube in the handpiece, returning water back to the reservoir. And as the water moves through the handpiece, it removes the heat. The suction pathway is external. Uh, the, the fragmented tissue and the fluid flows through an external tubing. Uh, and the tip and the suction tubing are completely disposable. So after each case, they're uh, thrown out. Um, and the irrigation fluid flows around the vibrating tip to cool and to minimize the tip blockage. The clear silicone flu, like as I said before, encircles the, the distal tip of the CUSA, and then it provides a continuous pathway for delivery of irrigation fluid along with the fragmented tissue and any debris and fluid that you have in the field. And the flu ends approximately two millimeters from the distal tip end, and again, there's the two pre-aspiration holes that participates in uh, reaccumulating or the or, or aspiration uh, and the irrigation of, of the cellular debris in the fluid. And this is, again, a picture of what the console looks like, and, uh, along with the, the handpiece that's attached. Um, the clear tubing that you see here running along the, the handpiece and back to the console is the irrigation and the, the suction tubing that I was talking about. And then this here is the, the control panel where you can change the the, the, the amplitude as well as the, the irrigation. Um, and then the IV pole normally hangs over here where you can uh, hang an IV bag or, or an IV bottle for the irrigation. The back side looks like this. Um, again, there's a power supply here uh, that goes to, the power, uh, to power the machine. And then it comes with a foot pedal that you operate uh, while you're uh, using the CUSA machine. Now, there aren't too many things uh, that can go wrong when you're using the CUSA. Obviously, you have to have some knowledge about its actual application in the, in the various operations. Um, if, you're, you, if you have the handpiece uh, that's act, uh, actively vibrating and you put it up against any tissue, I mean, it can potentially uh, put a hole right through just about anything. Um, so as you're dissecting, you just need to be very careful of what you're, what you're seeing and the actual uh, the, the, the force by which you use it against the tissue. You don't have to apply too much pressure when you're using this. You just basically need to just rest gently up against any tissue that you want to cut through. And any soft tissue, such as like solid organs, it'll aspirate and fragment that tissue very well. And then it leaves behind stronger tissue behind, such as the artery or bile duct uh, and what have you. So as you're dissecting, just apply very gentle pressure uh, on the tissue. And then as you're dissecting and as you're seeing uh, vessels or bile ducts that you want to preserve, then, obviously, then you want to uh, move your hands in such a way that you'll preserve those tissues. And in, like this afternoon in the hands-on course, I'll show you exactly the movements uh, that are needed for that. Um, so, so again, the, one of the major uh, things that can go wrong with this is that if you don't have enough experience using the custom machine, you can actually put a hole in a lot of different things and 
uh, there could be catastrophic bleeding and, and all that. But but if you have, with some experience, though, that can be avoided, and uh, it it really allows a very delicate dissection of solid organs such as the liver tissue. And and in fact, uh, with the use of the CUSA, I still have yet to encounter a liver tumor that I cannot remove. Obviously, if there is 50 tumors, then you know that's not resectable for oncologic reasons, but from a pure technologic standpoint, you can remove just about anything that is in the liver with the use of the CUSA. And then one other thing that you can do to hurt yourself is if, uh, you, have the, if you have the wrong grip in such a way that you're squeezing the flu so that it inhibits uh, the, the circulating, circulating irrigation fluid uh, flow, then that will actually allow the tip to overheat and you can actually burn, burn your hand. So as you're holding the CUSA, it's very important that you hold it very gently and lightly so that you don't in inhibit the circulating irrigation fluid. And that's it.